Hey fam, happy Saturday. Hope y'all have a good weekend. I know I am. It's been pretty good. I wanted to come on here so I can do my review of the Black and Blue movie. And I actually saw this, um, I guess it was like a week, week and a half ago. I wasn't able to jump on here and do my review right, right away because it was... It was snowing out here in Colorado. <laughs> like, it was bad. Anyway, um, I had to get my truck fixed, the whole nine. Anyway, I'm here now. And I want to start with the cast of this movie. And the first one is Tyrese Gibson. We know him from the Fast and Furious franchise. He's also a singer and rapper. Uh, we have Naomi Harris. Now, she's an English actress and she is from, we know her from the movie Moonlight. And in that movie, she played the mother of the main character, the one who was like on crack right uh she was also in rampage she was in 28 days later and she was in skyfall the 007 movie then we have frank grillo and we know him from captain america winter soldier and he plays the character black rumblow brock brock rumblow i'm sorry i'm saying this all wrong we also know him from the purge anarchy and he's also in Captain America, Civil War, and The Purge Election Year. And then we have Nofiso Williams, and I know her from Black Lightning. And she's also in True to the Game. And then we have Mike, is it, oh gosh, y'all, I'm horrible, I can't even read my own handwriting. Couture C. Cutler, I don't know how to say his name. The guy that plays Luke Cage, alright, main character in there. He's also from... Evil, a show that I currently watch on regular TV. And if you all have not watched that, I highly recommend it. It's just good. I don't even know how to say that. It scared me the first time. It scared me, y'all. Like, I was up. I need, I had to watch another episode because I need to make sure a certain character went away. Um, he's also from The Defenders. Okay? So, let me see. We also have Reed Scott in this movie. And he is from Veep show. And he's also from Venom. Venom. All right? Now, this movie... I'm going to try not to give anything away that's not in the trailer. The trailer gives a whole lot to you. You know, there's... Anyway, okay, so this movie takes place in New Orleans. And it's the parts of New Orleans who have not recovered from Hurricane Katrina. And what I mean is that money and construction have not been placed into these areas. And they're messed up. They're dirty. They're not the high points of New Orleans. And... One in particular where this happened at is a black ghetto. It is like a housing project area. That's literally where this movie took place. Okay, so if you watch the trailer at all for this, you know that the main character in this movie, Naomi Harris's character, she's an ex-soldier who was in Afghanistan for years. I think she was in the Air Force. I'm not sure. All I know is she was at war, one of the branches of the military. And she's come home, and she's taken on the job as a police officer. And as a police officer, you see her, you know, early on in her career, hence the word rookie. And she's going off for the day with her partner. And one of the things that most of the cops there do is put on their body cam. Not all of them do, though, because at this particular time, it's not mandatory, which is insane, right? But anyway, her partner is one of the people who is literally like why are you doing that and she's like it's going to be mandatory you know soon anyway and it just blows my mind that there was ever a point that this was an option but I guess it is what it is right anyway in this movie you see uh, her and her partner trolling the areas and when they get to the particular area where this movie is about to happen they're driving by it her partner literally tells her oh that's a jungle in there like we don't fool with that area and she remembers growing up in that area okay she grew up there and he tells her that basically there's like monsters in there like monsters and she's like no I remember good people that were stuck in a screwed up kind of situation and he tells her we don't even go into that neighborhood unless it's a cop that's crying out for help from that neighborhood so later on in the movie, you do see exactly what you saw. Well, oh, there's so much that happens here. You see exactly what you saw in the trailer where she ends up with another partner because she's put on an extra duty, volunteers for it. She goes with the partner and he meets up with 
a main guy in the, uh, another cop there, and they're having a dispute with a street kid, an informant, I guess you would call him, and she hears a gunshot and gets out the car after this partner told her to stay in the car. And who does that, by the way? <laughs> who does that? If there's something going on and you're called into it and your partner is sitting in the car and you tell them, stay here. Like, like why is... There's just... There's no reason for that. I'm sorry. If we're on, Why would you leave your partner and tell them they need to stay put? Um, anyway, she ends up going in there and witnessing this. And, of course, her body cam is on. So she sees that cop that's played by the Frank Grillo character shoot... Two street kids, basically. Two two black young men, you know, dressed in street clothes. And they're regular kids. And she witnesses this happening. And as soon as it happens, they see her witnessing it. And they're like, oh my God, she's got a body camera on. They shoot her. And she falls through the floor of this old abandoned warehouse that they're at where this takes place. And the entire movie takes place after this. It's literally her on the run from these cops who are trying. At first, it feels like to get her like I need your body cam but very shortly after you realize we they, they're out to kill her they, they want to kill her and they're doing anything they need to do to get to her their only concern is keeping what they've done a secret that's it that's all that's all they care about they don't care who they come into contact with who they're hurting who they're killing who they're putting in a screwed up situation um, and on the on the road of this entire movie and it's intense, y'all. Um, there's action. There's fighting. It's intense. Like, you're what? what's going to happen? Like, you're rooting for our main girl here, but is she going to make it? And it's really good because early on in the movie, you saw her come into contact with Tyrese's character. And she knew him from around the way when she was younger. And she also knew his sister from when she was younger. The one uh, Nafisa's character plays. It's just crazy to see that... This woman is being chased by the police and she turns to an old friend to get a little help. And in the midst of all this, the police change her narrative with her own black people in that hood, in that area. They change the narrative by naming her the one who shot these two boys that the other cop who she caught on camera actually killed. It's mind blowing. And then you see everyone that she comes into contact with in the hood turn against her. So it's crazy because you literally see this character turn into, I don't give a fuck who's black and who's white. I don't care. I don't give a fuck about these hood people and these police. What is right? What is right? What is right and what is wrong? That is literally where she ends up taking herself and where she ends up pulling for the help she needs trying to get her job done as a police that she swore into office to be on to protect and serve like there's so many dirty cops out there y'all and while I say that I'm gonna take the same breath and say there are good cops there are but from the beginning of time with these police we know they're dirty we know many of them are dirty whether it's I'm gonna have my hand in this to get some money or I'm an ex-KKK member and now I'm here to shoot every fucking black person I come across. One or the other, as far as the, the bad cops are concerned, there's a huge amount of them. I'm not going to act like that's not play, taking place here. And you shouldn't either. If you are aware at all of what's going on, you know. You know what's up. This movie was really good. It's important. It's important that these type of stories be told. Okay? Because when we say that these... Cops are out here acting reckless and killing people for no reason. We're not playing. It's not a game. No one's trying to gas you up or lie to you. It's just facts. It is what it is. Um, there was really good acting in here. The story was very well. Like I said, highly suspenseful. I would give this movie about a seven half eight. I, I enjoyed it. I, I recommend you go to the movies to see it. Um, I feel like it was also refreshing for me because... For a long time, I've been aware of a lot of things that are going on with black folks in this country, and I'm happy that I'm here now. I feel like, as that little term goes, woke, as far as black folks are concerned in this country. And when you're so aware of it, you see different things that scream out to you with it, and 
you try not to dwell on that portion of things so often. But you see it. And sometimes it takes somebody from the outside looking in to see exactly what you see to let you know that you're not batshit crazy. And I'm one of those people. I am one of those people. I'm going to revert back to this quote. To be a Negro in this country and to be relatively conscious is to be in a rage almost all the time by James Baldwin. That is factual to my life. That's factual to many black people's lives. And it's a very good representation of what is going on in this movie here and to what us woke black people are thinking. So please don't miss out on this movie. It's a good one. Um, if you like my videos, hit the like button, become a subscriber. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Bye-bye.